So I guess I, I'm, I'm interested to know, you know, you, you have these original images of people unclothed, of people showing body parts that shouldn't be shown in public. Mm -hmm. um, what gave you the idea to clothe them and not only clothe them, but clothe them the way that you have? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely brilliant. I just think about how people think, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm wondering what part of your brain, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, made you come up with, or how did you come up with this idea of mm -hmm. just like clothes? Like, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Like, I guess a couple of things. I think one, the, the striking thing, you know, the first impression when I saw the images was these people are naked, not these people are nude. These are not nudes. These are starkly naked people. We're not used to seeing people like that. And I wanted to, my first instinct was to clothe them. The other was that in our, in our home, we have a number of photographs of my ancestors. And I think how those photographs have been passed on and passed on through generations, and that we, and when, the, when those photographs were taken, I know that family members saved money for those. The photographer in his studio had clothing to supplement what they might have brought on their own. And those were passed on to relatives that they hadn't seen. Um, some of my family members are from Mississippi. Um, others are from Barbados. And the family that emigrated knew they would not be seeing the family members left behind again. And so that memorial almost was vitally important to them. It also serves in my family as a reminder of who we are, who we came from, and what our responsibilities are as a result of that. And I thought to myself, if these people had the choice, if Delia and Renti, if Drana and Jack and Fasina had had the opportunity to choose a photograph, what would they have done? They would have put on their best clothes. I also chose to, to clothe them in African attire for two reasons. One, I wanted to make that link with our shared roots in the continent. The other is I wanted to, if you will, give the finger to Professor Agassiz. You want to demonstrate that Africans are a separate and lesser form of humanity? Here is dignified African clothing that these people are wearing and we need to look at that. The other thing that I wanted to do with the, with the images is I wanted to center their faces. And I think having them clothed forces you then to look at their faces also. You know, you look at the clothing, but you're also drawn to their faces. And one of the things that always strikes me, the two photographs, the two daguerreotypes that have always struck me are the ones of the two women, mm. of Drana and Delia, and the very different expressions on their faces. Mm -hmm. Delia clearly is sad, and there is the title of the book that brought mm -hmm. me to these images, Delia's Tears. You can feel the pain in her, and that pain is translated into sadness. With Drana's image, that pain is translated into defiance. I see in her face a sense of defiance. Mm -hmm. I can imagine what, how different the experience was mm -hmm. for them. I also think it's, it's interesting that Drana falls off of the historical record after 1852. Um, and historians would say that means she either died, was sold, and there are no records for that, or that she ran. I like to think that Drana escaped. That's my fantasy for Drana. Just kind of looking at the artwork, looking at the looking at, at Drana in these photos, this looks like she's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, as you were talking and I'm thinking about it and I'm looking at, 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 at Drana and, and the clothing that you put on her, like I can't even imagine, like I had to imagine that she didn't have clothes on, mm -hmm. you know, or, or the, the photos that, are, the originals that, that you were working from. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, lastly, mm -hmm. how does this body of work fit into our ongoing national reckoning with our own history here in the United States? Mm -hmm. And I think that is tough. I think it fits in because one of the things that has always, that has always struck me is how the words in the preamble to the Constitution and in the preamble to the Declaration of Independence state these lofty goals and talk about what this country aspires to and how our expressed values are so much at odds at times with our espoused values. And I think that's something that we have to that we have to think about, that we th need to think about what our civic creed is as expressed in, those, in the preambles of those documents and how we work towards that. And I think these images are part of that conversation. We have to understand that this happened and think about what it means for us individually and what it means for our common life in this country. You know, there's a lot of conversation now about um, critical race theory, which has been perverted for political gain. If we examine our history, we can understand it and we can understand how it affects us now and know then what we need to do to rectify that, to redeem it, if you will. This is hard work, it's uncomfortable work, but when we examine this, we're also talking about issues of character, of courage, of justice, of responsibility. We live in, specifically here in Worcester, we live in an academic, city. Um, ten colleges and universities um, were always critically examining everything. Um, I think it's important for us to critically examine this. Uh, I think it raises a host of issues. It raises issues of how knowledge is used in the academy, how photography has been used both as a tool of liberation, a tool of truth, um, and also a, a tool to perpetuate um, falsehoods. I find that you know, the intersection of photography and enameling is something I want to continue to explore. It's my plan and my hope to continue working with these images in different ways. So, so this is a really heavy, heavy exhibit. You know, I took away something from this exhibit, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was full of emotion, um, full of just thinking about my own family, mm -hmm. thinking about my own family history. What do you want people to take away from this exhibit? Black, white, mm -hmm. Asian, yellow, green, purple. What do you want people to take away from this exhibit? Mm -hmm. I think I want people to, to take away from this exhibit the specific to these people, their individual dignity, their humanity. I also want them to take away from this, and for all of us to take away from this, a concept of our shared humanity, um, and how that, that humanity can be fractured um, and can be disregarded um, so easily. And it's something that we all have to work on. You know, I, I think about the groups now um, that are considered, uh, considered other um, and how all of us need to be working to embrace each other, particularly at this time in our history. So.
Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Angelique. You're welcome. If folks have an opportunity to come and see this exhibit, um, come to Arts Worcester and see this exhibit or go online. It's online also, um, but you should come in.